Hi, yesterday we had some severe storms go through near where I live. As you can see here, this is from the National Weather Service. On Friday, July 28th, multiple rounds of thunderstorms moved through southern Wisconsin. Several surface boundaries provided some sources of lift as the environment became more unstable. Initially, supercells producing large hail around two inches in diameter and heavy rain impacted the area before a surging line of storms moved in from the northwest. 60 to 80 mile per hour winds within the line resulted in tree damage across a large portion of the area. So you can see the storm moving across this area. The funny thing is, is that it kind of went around where I live. So we got some heavy rain, but here is um, some of the damage that's reported on this website. And you can see where the photos are from on here. So I give credit to all that. And here is some of the hail. That's huge. This one is ridiculous. And here's the people that took the photos. We really needed rain. Let me show you the drought update. Oh, come on. So, um, this was updated on 727 as of July 25th. Extreme drought returned across much of Salk, northern Iowa, and northwest Dane counties. Over the 60-day time period ending July 25th, precipitation defects are 6 to 8 inches in the extreme drought area and 3 to 6 inches across the rest of southern Wisconsin. Over the 90-day time period ending July 25th, Deficits are 8 to 10 inches in the extreme doubt, drought area and 6 to 8 across the rest of southern Wisconsin. These values are 25 to 50 percent of normal. The time period of April 27th through July 25th, 90 days, ranks as top 1 to the 10 driest, depending on location, for many locations in the extreme doubt, drought area. Stream flows and soil mo moisture remain below average. So actually, having some rain, like what you see coming through here, is a good thing. I think a lot of it might have ran off, actually. Um, and I hope no one got hurt or killed. These are some pretty damaging pictures here. Okay, so I just wanted to say that. Let's look real quick at the rainfall. So, there's, it doesn't look like, oh, here it was over an inch. And over here it was over an inch. Can I get that any bigger? Yeah. Oh, good. So some, oops, I can't. <laughs> some areas got over an inch. Great. That's fantastic. Actually, it looks like most of them are almost an inch. Here, 2.51. Wow, excellent. So this is the National Weather Service homepage. These are all alerts. These are heat warnings down here. There's some flooding up here. And what is that pink? Red flag, which is fire warning. And then these gray are air quality. And there's storms going through down here and over here still. But no alerts in my area right at the moment. I just want to say the National Weather Service has some really great information if people are looking for it. There's forecast maps. You can click on that. The satellite I find interesting. Air quality. All these are very interesting. And then they talk about up here, dangerous heat continues with some relief arriving Sunday. Fire weather concerns for the West continue. So um, you can get a lot of information off the National Weather Service. So as far as information, this is good. But I just want to show you a difference. I'm going to go on their radar site here. Okay, I just want to show you what the radar looks like through the National Weather Service. These are storms happening in St. Louis. Okay, and then these up here. 
and then let me show you one more site. And that is the College of DuPage. And if you go over here, you can click on Local Radar, which is what, Regional Radar is what it says. I'm going to look at that. Okay, I want you to notice the difference in the radar. Here, on this site, they actually show where the radar facilities are located. If you look in a circle, that's radar. And in the center is a little black dot, and that's where each facility is located. You can see on here clearly. And so it, when you click on the local area, it shows for this Midwest area. And you can go over here, and you can get a bigger view. Let's just look at the whole United States. So it clicks you to, do you want we, east or west? I'll just go on east and click on that button. So here you can see much more information. Like you don't just get where the clouds are. You're getting where the radar facilities are and how much intensity. And off to the, my right is a key that I don't have on the screen. But it tells you the intensity of the radar that's being uh, projected out from the facility. And there's different things too, like this one up here, the, you don't see hardly any clouds around. That's the intensity, the color, the gr bright green color. So it can be confused with how the clouds look. But if you want a better view of what's actually happening with the radar, I think um, College of DuPage does that. See so once again the comparison to National Weather Service. So uh, this has lots of information. College of DuPage has a lot of other information. Okay, grateful for you and here you're so